It's the Who Rescued Whom, Canine Rescue Tales podcast, and we're your hosts, John and Diane. Today's episode will tug at your heart. It certainly did ours. Our guest today is Jeff from Eastern Nebraska. Jeff is a retired Air Force officer and current government contractor. His story will not only encourage those with sadness and loss in their life to rescue a dog, but we hope it inspires people to seek out the help that they need. Sadness, brought on by loss, pain, or any other circumstance, can lead to isolation. In Jeff's case, even though his wife, Tammy, of many years, has been a life partner and there to help, it wasn't until he found his rescue dog, Amy, that he knew that she was what he needed to ease his troubles and make his life more complete. Before we tell you Jeff's story, do you have a rescue story you'd like to share with our audience? We'd love to talk with you. Just go to the Be A Guest page on our website, whorescuedwhom.com, and fill out our future guest information form. You can also email us at info at whorescuedwhom.com or message us through our Facebook page. Jeff grew up with what he calls farm dogs. They were kept outside, keeping watch over the property and accompanied family members hunting and fishing. Many were lost to the highway near their home. Later in life, his military career brought him to Nebraska. And in 1999, he got a wonderful dog named Freckles from what was essentially a puppy mill. According to the Humane Society, a puppy mill is an inhumane, high-volume dog breeding facility that churns out puppies for profit, ignoring the needs of the pups and their mothers. There are an estimated 10,000 currently active puppy mills in the United States, and 2.6 million puppies are sold each year after originating from a puppy mill. Fast forward to 2013. It was a tough year for Jeff, but then Amy entered his life. A couple of things that happened in 2013 were quite traumatic for me, and with my mom passing away and uh, Freckles passing away. And so I, I had told myself, no more dogs. I mean, too much work, blah, 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 for about a month, maybe. And I realized that to me, a dog was important. People who bond with their dogs know all too well that the time they get to spend with their four-legged friends is way too short, and the grief that follows their passing can be gut-wrenching. So much so, they initially swear off dogs forever, but many soon realize that something is missing, something that fulfills a need, something that overcomes that grief. It's hard to put your finger on it. Uh, they're not humans, but other than my immediate family, I've come to appreciate the fact that I'd probably rather hang around the dog than most humans anyway. So uh, I started looking, and I don't remember who it was, but they suggested that I look into a rescue. Jeff came across a local rescue's webpage. The rescue was located in eastern Nebraska. I started looking, and I sent you some pictures this morning. The first one was of Amy. The fact that a picture states a thousand words is an understatement because when I saw the picture, I mean, I just knew that was the that was the dog. I don't know. Pictures can't talk, but this one did. So this was, I would say, early November of 2013. And I called the people and they told me the story about her that that she was rescued from a high kill shelter in southeast Missouri near a town called Farmington, which it goes back to the point. It makes absolutely zero sense how she and I came to be because this is like a 10 hour drive away from here where she had come off of like a farm where she had been chased by wild dogs her entire time. She went to the shelter pregnant. They aborted her babies, and they were going to kill her because during the course of the time when she was on this farm, she was horribly abused. It was just heart heartbreaking to hear what had happened with this dog. But, you know, not knowing what I didn't know, other than the fact that the picture talked to me, I wanted to meet her. So we set up a time uh, to go meet her. But before that time, they had warned me that it was their assessment. And this is probably pretty strange coming from a place that does rescues. 
that she was possibly unadoptable because she was so abused. And I'm going, oh boy. Uh, but again, the picture talked. So we went. And that first meeting was at a place called Pets Earth. It was just kind of a neutral place to go see her. We came in and she was in the corner shaking like a leaf. So the lady said, this is Amy over here, but you can see she's a mess. And so Tammy and this lady sat down and I just laid on the floor. That's what I did. I didn't want to be imposing. I didn't want to be intimidating. I just laid on the floor. I didn't say anything. And pretty soon, it's like the dog is, you know, I, I mean, superimposing what I think a dog might say to itself, if it says anything at all, is like, hey, this, this guy's not going to kick me or beat me. So she came out of her corner and like circled around, but she didn't stop. And she went right back to the corner. And I just laid there. And this, this went on a couple, three times. And pretty soon I touched her. She shot back to the corner. And the lady said, see, I mean, I, I, I kind of warned you guys that this might not work out. Many dogs are deemed unadoptable due to age or for medical, emotional, or mental issues. Amy may have been a mess, as the rescue gal described, but Jeff saw something more. She said, well, what do you think? I said, I'm going to take her. And it was like, what? Are you, I mean, she basically was implying, are you crazy? But she didn't say that. And I said, no, I'm going to love her out of it. Over the next few weeks, Jeff and Tammy filled out the adoption papers. But the rescue kept asking them, do you really want this dog? They insisted that they did. So the rescue came over and inspected the house and property to make sure theirs was a safe and proper home for Amy. So uh, we set up a time on Thanksgiving weekend because I was going to be off a couple extra days. So they came over and brought her. And she ran upstairs to the, one of the upstairs bedrooms. I call it one of my upstairs man caves. She jumped up on the bed, and it's her favorite place even to this day. The second picture that I sent you is our first picture that Thanksgiving weekend. And she's sitting in a dog bed that we got for her, and that's me in the red sweatshirt, <laughs> which obviously, obviously detracts from the picture, but that's okay. We'll be right back with more of Jeff and Amy's story after we tell you about this episode's donation. The Who Rescued Whom Canine Rescue Tales podcast makes a donation to the rescue of choice in honor of the guests we feature on each episode. Jeff would like this episode's donation to go to the Nebraska Humane Society. The Nebraska Humane Society is the fifth oldest humane society in the nation, and today is also one of the largest. They offer shelter to animals who have no place to call home and provide vital services to them and to the people who love them. Every year, more than 24,000 animals, including wildlife, find their way to their doors. Through their programs, they touch the lives of more than 200,000 people annually with their message of compassion and humane treatment for all living creatures. The Nebraska Humane Society is housed on a 13-acre campus with 170 dedicated staff members and 500 volunteers. Their mission is to protect, save, and enrich the lives of animals in the communities they serve. Their vision is a good home for every pet. The Who Rescued Whom Canine Rescue Tales podcast will post a link in our show notes in case you'd like to donate to the Nebraska Humane Society as well. You can also see pictures of Jeff and Amy by visiting the episode page on our website, whorescuedwhom.com. According to the Veterinarian Centers of America, the wag of a dog's tail is one of the best methods of communication in the canine kingdom. Tail wagging may indicate insecurity, aggression, friendliness, or excitement. With Amy, 
Jeff realized something wasn't quite right. What I noticed for the first few months is she never wagged her tail or she never barked like, you know, dogs bark, right? She never did that. And it was like she was mute and almost couldn't express feelings of being excited when the tail wags, if that's what that means. So fast forward to February of 2014. So, you know, a few months. And like I said, she hadn't wagged her tail, no barking. She would always wait at the this big glass door around the front of the house. She knew what time I came home from work, and she would always lay at that door. But she never wagged her tail. She just laid there and watched at the door, kind of like, kind of like dances with wolves. So it was one of those weird things. It was like I would see her, and she would stand up, but she was looking through me. Very straight. <laughs> Dances with Wolves is a 1990 American epic western film starring, directed, and produced by Kevin Costner. It tells the story of Union Army Lieutenant John J. Dunbar, played by Costner, who travels to the American frontier to a military outpost where he befriends a group of Lakota Native Americans. While living at the outpost alone, he has several encounters with a wolf whom he affectionately names Two Socks due to the white markings on his lower legs. It was Lieutenant Dunbar's patience with Two Socks that resulted in a trusting relationship. So, one day I came home and it was February, and there was snow on the ground. And I I got out of the car like I normally did and went down and checked the mailbox. And all of a sudden... Here comes this dog charging out the front door, barking and just going crazy, tail wagging. And uh, I thought, wow, this is a different dog. And since that time, it is like it, it was like a uh, weight had been lifted off of her. <laughs> It has been Diane's and my experience with each of our rescues that there comes a moment, usually within the first few days of bringing home a rescue, when a dog realizes for the first time, hey, this is my home now, I'm safe, I'm loved, I can stop being afraid and be myself. They come out of their reserved, cautious selves and their personality shines through. We like to call this the moment. Although Amy's moment took a few months to come, it finally came. Amy fulfilled a need Jeff didn't know he had. Years earlier, he had visited with a Veterans Administration doctor. He said, how you doing? I said, well, you know, I'm okay, but I don't, and I don't know how to explain this, so I'm going to screw it up. But I'm not who I was. I have no idea how to uh, explain it other than, of course, I lost my mom, I lost my dog. And, uh, but I'm not who I was. And he said, I think you got major depression. Of course, now you're, you're telling a guy who was at every event was like the court jester, right? And just, just I, I kind of nutso and, and did crazy stuff and whatnot. But now this guy's telling me that I have this major depression, so they put me on pills. But that wasn't, that wasn't all it. What he needed was Amy. So the fact that we had each other, I think that that really helped me. It helped me more than any medication. But it helped me interact with a creature who s- seemed to understand. I have found that when you are deeply troubled, there are things you get from the silent, devoted companionship of a dog that you can get from no other source. Doris Day. Amy changed Jeff's life in many ways. 
For instance, Jeff had been a hunter all of his life, but his compassion and empathy for Amy's tormented past made him look at it differently. I used to be like a big hunter. I couldn't shoot. I couldn't shoot anything now. I couldn't put a worm on a hook now because I wouldn't want to hurt it. And, and you know, I'm the guy that if there's a fly on the door, the glass on the front door, not that the house is full of flies, but if one happens to get in, right, I open the door so it can get out. So, any, anyway, I, I think some of those behaviors are a direct result of knowing what she went through. So we asked Jeff, who rescued whom? I would submit that it's possible that we kind of saved each other in, in a different way and in a different context than you might put into taking on a, a shelter animal or that interaction with a human. This goes beyond that. Because I can tell you, I am very different. According to the National Alliance for Mental Health, Dogs bring happiness into your life, and depression is often no match for the unconditional love they provide. About 40 million U.S. adults suffer from depression. Taking on the responsibility to care for another creature increases our self-worth by reassuring us that we have a purpose and are needed. Jeff shared a funny story with us about the love and connection he has with Amy. I can be kind of a jokester. I mean, Tammy and I have been married since... 83 and started dating in 77. She knows me pretty well and honestly has nobody to blame but herself for uh, being here. Tammy told me early on, she said, that dog is in love with you. And of course, what would a smart guy like myself say about that? Oh, well, of course she is. She can't help herself. <laughs> but the point is, I think there is a capability in these animals to show love, you know, whatever that is. I mean, there's probably a lot of ways to define it, but there's something about this dog and that connection with me that I think that genuinely dogs have the capacity to love their humans. Dogs. Their simple lives are centered around their daily interaction with each of us, their family, their pack. As I was writing this, our current rescue dogs, Rex and Zoe, were comfortably laying on their beds, sound asleep with not a care in the world. Whenever I get up and walk over towards them, they always raise their heads and with a twinkle in their eyes, convey to me that they are in for whatever I want to do at that moment and will eagerly join me in the day's adventures. Dogs are ready companions, and though the precious few years that we get to share with them are all too short, they stand ready to accompany us for a little while on our journey through life. As Jeff treasures Amy, I treasure our dogs and the joy they bring to our home. A dog could bring joy into your life too. Please consider rescuing a dog. The Who Rescued Whom Canine Rescue Tales podcast is seeking sponsors. If you'd like to sponsor an episode or several, please email us at info at whorescuedwhom.com. This podcast was edited and produced by Mike McClellan at podcastps.com. Mike also wrote, performed, and produced all the music that you heard on this episode.